Chonisaurus, the lizard of the Shunshun Mountains and one of the largest aquatic predators to ever exist. This late Triassic Titan dominated its environment. Chonisaurus was one of the many giant ichthyosaurs that were some of the first gargantuan animals on our planet. But what if we tossed this ichthyosaur into the oceans of the modern day? Can the Chonisaurus survive today's oceans or will it face extinction in the modern seas? I will be judging them off of three categories, which are their preferences towards the environment, access to food, and competition for resources. I'll be scoring each of these areas out of 10, and I'll average these scores out to see if Shonisaurus could survive the modern oceans. I will be putting Shonisaurus in three different locations, which are Key West in the Gulf of Mexico, Sydney in the southeastern Australian kelp forest, and Genoa, which is in the Mediterranean Sea. Will the Jurassic Titan be able to survive the seven seas, or will it sink to the bottom? But before we start, remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more variety paleo content, with the goal of mine being to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. But I hope all of y'all enjoy the video. The Triassic Oceans in Nevada were ruled by the massive Shonisaurus popularis, which got to lengths of 50 feet long and weighed 20 to 30 metric tons, with this beautiful animal being known for its massive size, as Shonisaurus was one of the largest creatures during its time period, and one of the first truly giant animals. This titan of the deep was a generalist and ate whatever it could get its mouth on, which ranged from squids to fish to other marine reptiles. While this massive predator wasn't the fastest of swimmers, it was able to move up and down the water column with relative ease, which could have allowed Shonisaurus to ambush its prey from below, catching it off guard before it strikes. The bite force of our massive predator was nothing special, but it didn't need an exceptionally strong bite force to dispatch its prey, as it used its robust sectoral teeth to quickly and efficiently catch and kill their prey. The Shonisaurus was the apex predator within its environment, catching a variety of prey in the warm tropical waters of prehistoric Nevada, and our ichthyosaur was the largest creature in its environment. Chonisaurus is a fascinating creature, and I truly believe it's not used enough in paleo media, but now that we've established what type of animal we're dealing with, let's head to Key West, a small town in the Florida Keys. The Florida Keys are an island chain south of Florida in the Gulf of Mexico, and the first of our three destinations. The region is extremely diverse with a variety of habitats such as the only barrier reef in the continental United States, meadows of seagrass, and mangrove forest. The region stays hot and humid year-round, with temperatures averaging in the 70s during the winter and averaging in the high 80s during the summer months. And if you go further away from the shore into the Strait of Florida, the ocean can get to depths of 6,000 feet deep. There are a variety of aquatic animals that dominate the region, with a variety of fish, such as the bluefin tuna, great white, tiger, and hammered head sharks living in the area. Leatherback sea turtles and American crocodiles are also known from the region, although the latter isn't seen in the open ocean very much. And finally, there are plenty of large mammals within the region, with bottlenose dolphins, Atlantic spotted dolphins, short finned pilot whales, spotted dolphins, Cuvier's beaked whale, Blaineville's beaked whale, and sperm whales living in the region year round, with humpback whales, North Atlantic right whales, and manatees migrating through the region for a variety of reasons. But with that out of the way, let's see how Shonisaurus would fare in the Strait of Florida. The environment of the region region is somewhat similar to the Triassic Seas in Nevada, with both locations having a tropical climate with large stretches of open ocean. And while there isn't any data on the temperature of the seas in the Luling Formation, it's another location with a tropical climate. The temperature range seems like it would be perfect for our apex predator, and the depth seems suitable for Shonisaurus as well. The diving patterns of Shonisaurus don't seem to be very well known, but comparing it to its relatives give us some insight, with other ichthyosaurs having deep diving adaptations, with Shonisaurus sharing many of these traits such as the large eyes and streamlined body. While an aquatic predator probably wouldn't be able to dive as deep as something like a sperm whale, Chonisaurus seems well adapted to dive somewhat deep in the search of food. The environment of the Strait of Florida is honestly perfect for Chonisaurus, with it sharing many of the same characteristics as the Triassic Oceans our Titan was accustomed to. And for the Florida Keys, the Shonisaurus earns a 9 out of 10 for environmental preferences, with the warm ocean temperatures being the main reason the score is so high. Shonisaurus was the apex predator in the Triassic Seas of Nevada, with it also being the largest creature in its formation by a large margin. But the Florida Strait has animals within its weight range or larger, with a variety of large whales being too big for our ichthyosaur to hunt, with adult humpback, right, and sperm whales being completely off the menu. But their calves might be a different story, with many of these whales migrating through the region with their offspring. There are also a variety of other animals that wouldn't be off limit for Shonisaurus, with mammals such as manatees, a variety of dolphins, beaked whales, pilot whales, and even animals that aren't mammals such as leatherback sea turtles, 
bluefin tuna, gray white sharks, and giant squids being suitable prey. While Shonisaurus isn't as fast as a majority of its potential prey, they also most likely would be able to ambush them from a lower ocean column depending on the prey, with certain animals being far more common than others at specific depths. If the Shonisaurus decides to stay on the surface, they could prey on animals such as dolphins and whales. But if it dived a little bit deeper, Shonisaurus would be able to hunt giant squids and beaked whales, with a good portion of their prey in the region traveling between the different depths constantly. Manatees that travel through the Strait of Florida would provide Shonisaurus a unique opportunity, with manatees being slow compared to the other animals of the region, and have no natural predators. With a large variety of different prey in the Strait of Florida, I'll be giving Shonisaurus an 8 out of 10 for resource availability, with the region sustaining plenty of large fish, mammals, and reptiles that our giant ichthyosaur will be able to sustain itself on. While there is a large amount of prey in the Strait of Florida that our Shonisaurus could gorge itself on, there's also plenty of competition for the same resources, with the main source of competition coming from sharks and large whales. Great white and tiger sharks feed on the dolphins, smaller whales, tunas, and sea turtles of the region. This would be partially alleviated by the larger sharks also being on the menu for Shonisaurus. The other large animal that would cause some trouble for our behemoth is the sperm whale, with this gargantuan cetacean being comparable in size to Shonisaurus, as well as hunting similar prey, such as the giant squids in the depths. The battle between these two titans would be legendary, and I honestly don't think there's a definitive answer on who would win this confrontation. The Shonisaurus would face some fierce competition for resources in the Strait of Florida, but I believe our titan would persevere, with some of their competitors, such as sharks, being on the menu, with others, such as the sperm whale, being specialized for specific prey. Shonisaurus would be able to compete for resources successfully because it was a generalist and would eat whatever it could catch, and because of that, I'll be giving Shonisaurus a 7 out of 10 for resource competition, as while there is some competition for other predators, the generalist nature of our colossus would allow it to sustain itself in the region. The Strait of Florida is one of the most suitable places on Earth for Shonisaurus, with warm tropical waters sustaining plenty of large prey. Our Shonisaurus has earned a survival score of 8 out of 10, as our Leviathan has little to no issues with the environment and access to resources, with the competition for resources being the most pressing issue, but Shonisaurus will be able to overcome those challenges and become the apex predator in the Strait of Florida. But let's travel to the western Mediterranean now. Genoa, a place most of y'all have probably heard of, and this seaside city is our next destination, the western Mediterranean being more seasonal than the Strait of Florida, with hot and dry summers, with water temperatures staying around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and cooler wet winters, with water temperatures staying around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. There are a variety of habitats in the region, such as seagrass meadows, open ocean, and deep sea coral reefs that make up the western Mediterranean, and this part of the Mediterranean is far shallower than the eastern portion, with the deepest point being in the Alborian Sea, directly east of the Strait of Gibraltar, with depths reaching 4,920 feet. The makeup of animal life shares some similarities to the Strait of Florida, with bottlenose dolphins, sperm whales, cuvier beaked whales, and great white sharks all being found within the region. But our Shonisaurus will have to contend with some new animals, such as the sunfish, basking shark, fin whales, and Rocio's dolphin. The environment of the western Mediterranean, while not inhospitable towards Shonisaurus, isn't suited to our ichthyosaur either, with ocean temperatures changing throughout the seasons, and don't stay constant like in the Strait of Florida, with ocean temperatures not going above 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which is already around the same level as the ocean temperatures during the winter in the Strait of Florida. Winter temperatures in the western Mediterranean reached into the low 60s, and while this isn't ideal for our Shonisaurus, the ocean temperatures are warm enough to not kill our giant ichthyosaur. The western Mediterranean is also not as deep as the Strait of Florida, with the deepest point being less than 5,000 feet deep. While the environment of the western Mediterranean isn't inhospitable for Shonisaurus, with large swaths of open ocean and deep water, the cooler ocean temperatures aren't ideal for our behemoth, but they would most likely be able to survive in the region anyways, and with that, Shonisaurus earns a 6 out of 10 for environmental preferences. The availability for resources in the Mediterranean is somewhat different compared to the Strait of Florida, with there being a decent chunk of overlap in prey species that our Shonisaurus could eat, with great white sharks, a variety of beaked whales, and dolphins that Shonisaurus could sustain itself on, in addition to new prey items such as the basking shark and sunfish. Our Shonisaurus would have little to no difficulties hunting many of the large aquatic animals in the region, but the main problem Shonisaurus will face in the western Mediterranean is related to the diversity of megafauna, as there are less large marine mammals, reptiles, and fish within the region. And while some animals in the Mediterranean are viable prey options such as the basking shark, the region is frankly less diverse than the Strait of Florida and doesn't support as many large animals. 
and because of this, I'll be giving Shonisaurus a 6 out of 10 for resource availability. While there's less prey for our giant ichthyosaur to feed on, there's also far less competition in the region, with many of the apex predators in the region being heavily threatened, such as the Great White Shark. Sperm whales are also prevalent in the Western Mediterranean, and with less prey for our Shonisaurus to hunt, they would most likely be competing for resources even more than in the Strait of Florida, with Shonisaurus taking more frequent trips to the depths of the ocean in the Mediterranean Sea to hunt prey such as large squids that live in the ocean deep. While there's less competition for resources in the Mediterranean than the Strait of Florida, Shonisaurus could have also preyed upon many of the animals it was competing with in the Strait of Florida, and because of this, I will be giving Shonisaurus a 6 out of 10 for resource competition. As while there's less competition for resources, there's also less prey to begin with. The Shonisaurus will have a much harder time in the Western Mediterranean, with it earning a score of 6 out of 10, with lower ocean temperatures and less diverse prey populations being the main reason why it scored much lower than the Strait of Florida. While Shonisaurus wouldn't do super well in the Western Mediterranean, I don't believe they wouldn't be able to live in the region either, as the ocean temperatures are just high enough for Shonisaurus and the availability of prey isn't low enough that it couldn't sustain itself at all. I believe it would be a rough life for Shonisaurus in the Western Mediterranean, but I suspect it would eventually establish itself in the region. And while it might not dominate the Western Mediterranean, it would do well enough to survive. But now we're off to our final destination in the South Pacific. Sydney, Australia. This coastal city is by far the coolest place we've visited, with ocean temperatures drastically changing with the seasons, with the summers reaching 79 degrees Fahrenheit and the winters reaching 42 degrees Fahrenheit. Unlike the other locations we have visited, the region is far less diverse in environments, with kelp forests dominating the region, and cool, nutrient-dense open oceans outside of these kelp forests. The deepest ocean point surrounding southeastern Australia is in the Tasmanian Sea, with it reaching depths of 19,489 feet. The wildlife of the area is also far more diverse than both of the places we visited today, with a myriad of whales such as humpback, southern right, blue, fin, sai, bradiers, pygmy right, mink, sperm, islet, cuvier, andrews, and arquinox all living within the region. Dolphins are also present in southeastern Australia, with the Australian humpback, Indo-Pacific, bottlenose, orca, false killer whale, and common dolphins presiding in southeastern Australia. For the first time, our Shonisaurus will be interacting with pinnipeds, with the Australian fur seal and sea lion, in addition to the New Zealand fur seal. Large fish are also common in the region, with tuna, great white, basking, tiger, hammerhead, and bull sharks all being found within the waters around eastern Australia. The amount of animals I just listed proves the immense diversity of the region, with multiple species of marine megafauna all finding themselves in southeastern Australia. And while there is some overlap between here and the previous regions, the vast majority of animals here will be unknown to our Shonisaurus. As stated before, the ocean temperatures fluctuate within the seasons immensely in southeastern Australia, with summer temperatures being within Shonisaurus's preferred temperature range, while winter temperatures are far too cold for our ichthyosaur, and these temperatures will most certainly prevent Shonisaurus from living within the region for parts of the year at the very least. The depths of the ocean in eastern Australia are the deepest Shonisaurus has visited yet, and it would most likely not visit the deepest parts of the region, with depths reaching almost 20,000 feet. The seas in southeastern Australia are by far the most inhospitable to Shonisaurus yet, with the cooler ocean temperatures being detrimental to our Titan, and for that, Shonisaurus earns a 4 out of 10, with the main saving graces being the ocean depths and temperatures during the summer months. While Shonisaurus isn't suited to stay within the region year-round, the cooler ocean temperatures provides plenty of opportunities, with the marine wildlife in southeastern Australia being immensely diverse, with plenty of large marine mammals and fish Shonisaurus could feast on, with many of these animals providing little to no difficulty to our ichthyosaur. Humpback and right whales travel through the region during their long migrations, and bring their their calves with them, which could provide plenty of opportunities for Shonisaurus, as a majority of baleen whales are far too large to be hunted by Shonisaurus as adults. One of the only baleen whales in the region that's small enough for our Shonisaurus to hunt is the Psy Whale, as it's comparable in size to our Triassic Titan, but I highly doubt this would be a common occurrence. Like the other destinations we've visited, there are a variety of dolphins and beaked whales that are also sufficient prey for Shonisaurus, and many of the large sharks such as the Great White, Tiger, and Basking Sharks could also be potential prey. If Shonisaurus Shonisaurus wants to travel into the depths, they can hunt giant and potentially colossal squid, as while they have been recorded in southeastern Australia, sightings are inconsistent and their true range is unknown. The waters surrounding southeastern Australia are extremely diverse, and there are oodles and oodles of large prey that Shonisaurus could sustain itself on, and for those reasons, I'll be giving Shonisaurus a 10 out of 10 
and for resource availability. With the increased access to resources, the competition within the region is the fiercest our Shonisaurus has seen yet, and they will be encountering established populations of orcas and false killer whales for the first time. And while both of these animals have been spotted in the Strait of Florida and Western Mediterranean, their populations aren't established like they are in the more temperate waters of Australia. Both of these predatory dolphins are known to hunt the sharks, dolphins, and even whales from time to time, with orcas specifically hunting large whales such as the humpback and blue whale from time to time. Shonisaurus might even find itself under attack from killer whales, as it's in a similar size range to many of the whales orcas hunt, but more pressure will be put on Shonisaurus due to them competing with orcas for resources. In addition to predatory dolphins, many of the same sharks Shonisaurus has encountered before live within the area, and hunt much of the same prey as orcas, but since Shonisaurus could prey on many of these sharks, they don't provide as much of a challenge. Our ichthyosaur is still under pressure when it travels to the deeper points of the ocean, with sperm whales still being prevalent in southeastern Australia. Shonisaurus will most certainly have a difficult time competing for resources, but there being more predators than any of the other localities we have discussed today, and for that I'll be giving Shonisaurus a 5 out of 10 for resource competition, as while there are plenty of large apex predators, the utter diversity of wildlife in the region off puts that partially. The Shonisaurus has earned a 6.33 out of 10 for Southern Australia, which is almost the exact same as the Western Mediterranean, with both regions providing different challenges. While the Mediterranean didn't have enough prey to sustain our large ichthyosaur, the seas of Southeastern Australia are too cold during the winter months for our Shonisaurus to stay year round, and the region has so many large apex predators that will all be competing for resources with our Shonisaurus. The main thing going for the region is the sheer diversity of large prey items, and I personally believe Shonisaurus will be able to survive in the region during the summer months as ocean temperatures are warm enough for a titan, and they would be able to gorge on the large variety of megafauna. But once winter comes, they would have to leave the region to avoid facing damage from the cooler ocean temperatures. Unlike my video about if horses could survive in the Mesozoic, where the answer was a simple no, which y'all could go check out when you're done watching this video, the answer for if Shonisaurus could survive in the modern oceans is far more nuanced, with the answer being yes, depending on the region. Like I said before all the way at the beginning of the video, Shonisaurus lived in warm tropical waters, and I could see populations establishing themselves in places like the Strait of Florida or the tropical waters of the Pacific, with there being access to plentiful resources and warm ocean waters year-round. In environments such as the Mediterranean, I could see Shonisaurus surviving there, but I don't see populations of Shonisaurus establishing themselves in the region, as there are areas with far more food not too far away, with ocean temperatures that are consistently warmer. In the cooler waters of southern Australia, I could see Shonisaurus migrating to the region in the summer months, with the water temperatures being warm enough for our titan to be comfortable. But once winter arrives, Shonisaurus will have to head back into the warmer waters. The Shonisaurus would most likely establish permanent populations in warm tropical oceans, with them venturing into more temperate waters depending on the season, and they could potentially follow the prey that migrates. The Shonisaurus has a much higher chance of survival compared to the horses in the Mesozoic, and in certain regions of the world, the Shonisaurus would once again become the apex predator of the open ocean. If you stuck around to the end of this video, thank you so very much. Tons of hard work went into this video, and I really think the final product is quite solid. I want to thank every single one of y'all for supporting my journey on YouTube, and if you want to see more content like this, make sure to like and subscribe, as it really helps my channel grow. The hype feature has been out for a little bit, so please consider hyping this video as well. And I also have a channel membership that costs $4.99, and you get access to perks such as early access to videos, shoutouts to the end of each video, and more, so please consider joining. I also have a Discord server, so check that out if you want to. All the art you're seeing now is from there, and the next video will be something massive. But I'll see y'all then, and I hope every single person watching this video has a great day. Bye bye